Thanks for logging on to Countdown to Indy. We are live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'm Chris Hagan. He's Chris Whitlick, and he is Renus VK, the youngest driver ever to qualify on the front row. What's it been like, Renus? I know you got the win here earlier this month. A lot more people wanting autographs, people <laughs> stopping you everywhere, and now here you go, making history yet again. Yeah, it's crazy. It's been a crazy month. Uh, before, before my win, uh, I could just walk through Speedway and, you know, <laughs> Nobody would recognize me, but now it's it's a lot different. But uh, I just enjoy it, you know. Last last year there were no fans, and now I'm surrounded by fans. So uh, yeah, just very proud of my achievements and very happy with how all the fans yeah how the fans go along with it. I want to know the key to your success qualifying on this oval. Last year as a rookie, you qualified fourth. I think you were the only Chevy in the Fast Nine. This year you qualified on the front row. You're 20 years old. Where do you get the experience here that uh, most of these guys don't even have? Um, I'm a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's what you need. Uh, no, but, you know, I've got a great team with a lot of experience. Uh, I've got Ed Carpenter uh, in the team, and he really gives me a lot of tips. And you saw in qualifying, it was super close. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I was, I'm very lucky to have them around me, and uh, I think it, it's a great team that just helps me get the best possible results. What does it mean to be on the front row here at the greatest spectacle in racing? Is there a sense of achievement, a sense of confidence that you get from it as well? Oh, definitely. It shows that you have a great car to start with, but also, you know, front row, you're just the first cars that are going to cross the line and you, you dictate, you know, the whole field. So uh, it's very special and I feel very proud to have achieved this. You talked about Ed, you know, he's 40 years old, you're 20 years old, and you were just this close. Uh, that's the kind of the way it's been in the series. You have all the young guys like you. You have some of the old guys, you know, Tony Kanaan, Scott Dixon, and Ed. Do you pay attention to that? Do you realize, okay, here come the young guns, and here is like the old guard, but they're still just as competitive? Is, is that something you take into consideration out there? Um, well, definitely a little, yeah. Uh, but, you know, every, every driver is just another car. I just look <laughs> at another car. So, uh, no, that's, you know, everyone's human. There's no, uh, there's no Supermans here. So, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, give it all and uh, try to pass many people. Well, you guys set up, you and Ed, your cars, you were set up pretty similar, I, I understand. And that's, that's why the times were so close. But when you think about four laps and the human element, it's amazing that you guys were so close like that. It's crazy, yeah. Uh, I actually got loose in my last lap, mm -hmm. but I kept it, kept it planted. So... Uh, if I had lifted, I would have been fourth, so uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, my balls were big enough that day, but uh, no, I'm, I'm very, uh, very happy and very proud, and of course, it's nice to have uh, Ed just, just behind me. Renus, your reputation of the paddock, I think, is one of completely fearless, like nothing seems to intimidate you out here. Um, how do you make that work for you? Is, is that accurate, A, and how will you make that work for you uh, during the race on Sunday? Um, yeah, yeah, you just you got to be fearless. Once you, once you have any fear, you're not going to be fast here. So, you know, I, I was just talking about that oversteer in, uh, in lap four, turn one. Well, I broke my finger in turn one six weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite crazy, but the confidence is, is huge. So uh, I think that will definitely help me in the race. Uh, I think the first three quarters of the race are just going to be try to maintain in the top five and, just stay there and make sure once everyone's really going to fight in the last few, last, you know, 20 laps, you're going to be there and going to be flat out and ready to win. Now, yeah. I know last year you probably admittedly made a few mistakes during the race that yeah. you'd like to, to, to take back. Was that a learning experience from you? And can you take that uh, to your track day on Sunday? Definitely. Uh, I made a few mistakes last year that really, uh, really bounced me back. But... I uh, thought a lot about it, uh, you know, in a bad way. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I know what's coming, what's waiting for me. So I, I'm very happy with the experience. And I think this year, you know, that pit stop was my big mistake in the race. Well, I've had many pit stops afterwards, and they were, they were all very good. So, um, yeah, no, no hard feelings anymore. And I just see this as another opportunity to redeem myself. Rainus, you talk about being fearless. I am not fearless. I get scared going through a yellow light when I'm driving down the street. It's but true. How, how do you, you know, you talk about you, you're always out there. You're always going to try to be flat out. But then you have to realize this is a long, long race. You can't go out there and win it, you know, in the first 10 laps. How do you kind of control your, your instinct to go out there and, and go all out, but also realize there's going to be things you have to negotiate through for 200 laps? 
Definitely. Uh, you got to be aggressive, but you got to be smart. So uh, you don't want to be reckless or anything. And, you know, you have the ability, I have the ability to pull back and go like take it easy uh, on a pass early in the race and, you know, actually learn, learn throughout the race and try to learn how I can make the best passes. Uh, for the end of the race in best position. So uh, I think the first three quarters of the race are just going to be about where do I need to be once everyone's going to really haul ass. Have you looked at, uh, do you go back and look at film of old 500s or maybe look at some of the things that other drivers have done through the years to kind of even imagine how they'll be acting? Because you you're going to have all those cars around you when, when you take the green flag and everybody's going to have their own plan and you're going to have to negotiate around those as well. Uh, yeah, well, I think uh, in, in earlier years, everyone's taken it quite easy in turn one. You know, everyone wants to compete all 200 laps. So uh, I think there's, there's not much to win in the first lap, but there's a lot to lose. So uh, I think I'm just, you know, if I can grab the lead without taking huge risks, I'm going to do that. But if I have to tuck back in third, I'm, I'm fine with that too. Renus, for those who don't know, you're Dutch. Uh, your dad was a race car driver as well. Yeah. Tell me how you got your start and y your dad's influence on your racing career. Yeah, so I was a little kid. Uh, my dad was, was like an amateur, like a very good amateur race car driver, but he did not make his money with it. So um, I always went to the racetracks as, you know, my dad was my biggest hero. So I was there um, always cleaning the little, little stones off his tires. And, uh, <laughs> always trying to find a role in the team uh, and yeah just I, I loved it so I wanted I wanted to do what he was doing so uh, when I was eight years old I got a go-kart for my birthday and um, what started out as just something for fun ended up being something very serious but uh, I'm an indie car now and uh, yeah my dad really uh, you know he knows what racing's about and he really helped me make the right decisions in the way to our Indy car. We see your folks here. We have uh, all month long. I know they're staying in Speedway here uh, with you. How involved are they with, with, with you and your racing career? Because they are in the pit box. Your mom's following you around with a camera. I mean, they are so heavily involved in, in your race career right now. Yeah, they're definitely uh, super excited. Uh, yeah, so we actually were working with the document, documentary crew. Uh, but because of COVID, they're Dutch, they cannot come here. So uh, my mom is walking with, uh, with the GoPro and uh, trying to put everything on camera because there's a lot happening the last few weeks. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just great to have them here. I've had great success, uh, you know, with my win a week ago. And uh, it's just, you know, the, all the emotional, everything that, that, that comes with it. It's just so amazing to do that with them. It's great to see. Sometimes it looks like your dad is more nervous than you are. You can see his emotions, he and he's and, and you're just you're just nice and calm in the car. So it's it's great to see how that support is still there. And like you said, since you win, I mean, we've got giant posters of you around the track, and everybody kind of knows that face. But how did you become Renus VK? That's not your your actual name. So tell, I can't pronounce your real name. Say your real name and tell us why you became VK. So my real name is Renus van Kalmthout. Um, which is very hard and uh, <laughs> so when I was uh, 15 years old 2016 that's when I decided you know next year 2017 I'm gonna drive USF 2000 in the road to Indy um, but I knew like from my time in go-karts that the English uh, um, English reporters they were just struggling with <laughs> with my name so um, Van starts with a V Count out starts with the K, so we thought we first started with the two letters like VK, but it's VK in England uh, or in the U.S., but in the Netherlands it's VK. So it's a it's a whole different <laughs> different name depending on where you go. So a Dutch reporter wrote down VK like it is now, and uh, yeah, the name was born. Can, can you say it, Chris? Can you say his real name? I can't. If no. he says it again, maybe I could. One more time. Rinus van Kalmthout. <laughs> van Kalmthout. <laughs> Renus van Kalemthout. Right. I'm not going to try, but I'm, I'm not very good. Well, I appreciate that. Well, what's great is now you're, you're making a name for yourself, yeah. and people know it, so let's check out what you're going to have here this on helmet, uh, race day. Bree's bringing it in. This, this helmet is, is so special. Yeah. Uh, 
tell us about the idea for it and, and what's behind it. And you can turn it around and Wes can get a nice shot of the backside yeah. after you get the front side. So, um, first of all, I wanted to have the Dutch orange is like the Dutch mm. national color. I wanted to have that in there because I always had it in my helmets and, you know, you see it when I'm driving. And then, of course, red, white, and blue is the Dutch flag. But then my helmet painter came up with an idea of putting old 500 tickets and rain checks, qualification mm. cards on the helmet. And uh, I think it turned out really cool. Uh, 500 miles, it's in vintage leaf gold from like the 50s, uh, which he found somewhere and uh, Hodo on tight. Some people thought I made a, like a spelling error in my helmet. <laughs> Hodo means holding on for dear life in Bitcoin terms. So, got Bitcoin on the front here, which I think is, you know, it's iconic. So I had to have, I, I had to put it on the helmet, and uh, we went kind of hot rod style with the VK. So, uh, <laughs> no, I think it turned out, it turned out like a hundred times better than I ever imagined. So, coolest helmet I've had so far by by a mile. Yeah, that's fantastic. Obviously, the history and the tradition here means so much, and you've got that on your helmet. How much did you know? about the Indianapolis 500 and the history. And when you came over here, had you a chance to watch the race when you were younger? Um, so when I was a, a little kid, I knew about, you know, since I, as far as, as I go back, I know about Ari's win. Um, but, you know, Formula One is quite, you know, the thing in, in the Netherlands. And like, when I was young, there weren't really yeah, we got Robert Dornbos, but it wasn't like very big in the Netherlands when he was driving. So uh, right now I can see that many Dutch people are like watching IndyCar and it's being broadcasted on Dutch TV. But uh, yeah, I, actually the first Indy 500 I've been to was the 2016 100th running of the Indy 500, which I actually went here to the track. <laughs> and uh, since then I, uh, I've been to the race every year. And, uh, you know, I've been dreaming of winning the race every year. Well, there's a lot of history on that helmet, and you've made history for this 105th running. Youngest guy ever starting on the front row. I know a lot of folks have learned the name. They know the number, number 21 for Ed Carpenter Racing. And if you win, maybe they'll pay him off in Bitcoin. We'll see how that goes. But, Renus, <laughs> thanks for the time. We Renus, wish you the you best so of luck. Yeah. It's going to be great watching you on Sunday. He's Renus VK. He's Chris Whitlock. And I'm Chris Hagan. We thank you for logging on. We'll see you tomorrow, high noon, the countdown to Indy. <laughs>